what I'm going to do, I'm going to tie this tadpole. Uh, and what it is, <clears throat> yeah, well, I was going to, I need to hang it if I can. Hang on, I should have put some tip on the What it does, see how that's... Your hands in the way. It stays balanced. Yeah, see how it's parallel? <coughs> when, you, when you tie it, you weight it to do that. So the fishing and under indicator kind of kind of does that in a natural motion rather than yeah. hang, hanging like that. Yeah. And you know, like in Davis or something, would probably be killer it's, too. It's on a jig hook with uh, uh, yeah, I read that a split shot. Yeah, what? Yeah, well, and, and I can, I can, we, I can, I can show you. How, I thought I had enough beads for to do that with everybody, but I can show you how to do it. You put it on a straight pin, and then you kind Stop of figure it out. Yeah, you just tie it on and just tie a leech. It's kind of a cool, kind of a cool fly. So we, for the tadpole, and I've caught more fish probably on a tadpole than, than anything on the tadpole and on this. Uh, this little one here uh, caught a lot of fish on that one. <coughs> I don't know if you can see that. Like yeah, it's kind of a beetle. I, when I was, my folks lived in Sparks, so I, I fished that thing a lot. I fished like 26 days one one winter, and I got to know this local guy that was out there every day, and and that was one of his patterns, man. And I've caught like 20, 30 fish in a day on that thing, so it's really simple. But it must be like a beetle or something. I don't know what what it, what it is, why they eat it, but chartreuse seems to be. One of the greatest colors I use, if you look at these, I like black, uh, black and chartreuse, that brown works good, <coughs> all black, purple, you know, those are kind of my favorites, but I think the, the best color is whatever you got on, it's in the water, kind of, whenever you have some confidence in, you know, it's fish, it's not rocket science fishing, they're just, you know, but you just got to get it in front of the fish, so. So the, the hook I prefer for this is this uh, $24.99, you see that? It's uh, it's like razor sharp, man. They even get close to it. That you, you stick them on. It's 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 a two X strong. Uh, the other hook is this twenty four fifty seven, which is a real strong hook. Uh, it's about half the price of the, these twenty four ninety nines are really pretty expensive. They're like almost ten bucks for twenty five. But for my own stuff, that's that's what I I prefer. But uh, this this hook work, works fine too. So. Pretty simple deal. You can crank these things out pretty fast. So I'm just going to start my thread. So I'm going to take some marabou. The hardest part about this fly is finding decent marabou. Man, it's just like, I figure marabou is about 50% throw away. And black marabou is the hardest to find. So, so you don't want a whole lot. I don't want it real, real heavy. What are you looking for in the mirror? For the, <coughs> you see that? I like the fine tips on the, on this one. Now on a bug on a bugger, I like the coarser stuff like you like for J Fairs, mm -hmm. but for these, I like something that kind of moves and it's kind of sparse. So you want the tail about about three times the length of the body. So I just kind of eyeball it. Tie it down about to the bend, and then I'm just going to take one wrap underneath it, kind of lock it in there. So I'm going to cut it it yeah, I mean you can crank them out, so you don't mind losing. But well, the other thing too is tip it. I mean I'm not using anything less than two X. The fish are getting so big, man, that three X are just they're going to they're going to eat you up if you get a big one. So and they're not leader shy. So the foam for this is a size eight. So I cut the foam about six millimeters wide, six to seven millimeters wide. Way. So I want to trim the foam just a little bit. And I'm going to get it, I don't want to go all the way to the eye. And I'm just going to catch the tip of it, a couple wraps. And then I don't want to squeeze all the foam, I don't want this thing to float, so I'm going to leave air gaps in here, so I'm going to make a See how wide up the wrap on them and see that in black. But how long of a leader do you use? I use like six to seven feet. I want I want about three feet between my woolly bugger and my uh, and my dropper fly. So I want to wrap this down to where it's just to where the uh, marabou starts. So when I fold it over. <clears throat> 
and it takes about two inches. This is this is a, a Staz. You could use a J Fair's long shuck. Yeah, I kind of like I kind of like more expensive than yeah. A Staz. I like a Staz, and the Staz is getting a little hard to find. Although uh, Stockard has it, uh, it's got a lot of shine to it. Is there different sizes of a Staz? Uh, I just use the yeah. There is there's small uh, standard and there's large. I just use the standard size. <coughs> stuff from there now. So uh, what I, I don't know if you can see that, but I've kind of pulled a little bit off the tip. I just, that's where I want to tie it in. So I'm just going to, going to catch it right, right there on the end. Just like you will shimmy. Yeah, if, like you didn't do a bugger or something. And then, same thing, I'm going to, I'm going to tie my thread back down where I already did. I'm going to leak because I want that foam to be, those Little, little balls of buoyancy there. Now I'm going to come pretty much close to the front. So that when I wrap this stuff, I'm going to kind of wrap it in the grooves that my thread was in, and I kind of want to pull pull it back as I go. So that you're not smashing down all the fibers. <laughs> yeah, yeah, because they'll just. You know, you can afterwards you can kind of rag it out if you want. This stuff's a pain. You can never get it to where you don't have it all over the eye. So I'm going to tie it off with just a couple wraps. Cut it off. And one thing you want to try to make sure you do is keep the eyes clean on these flies because what happens you're out there and your fingers are freezing and you kind of try to try to put your tippet through a, an eye that's clogged up is a real pain so get as much of this garbage out of here as you can So then I'm just going to bring this thing up. Set it up like a gurgler, it too. Yeah, that's basically probably where they got the gurgler. I mean, this was out before the gurgler. Oh, really, so it's basically kind of the same thing, yeah. So yeah, just taking a few wraps and then coming in here and getting in front of it and clip as much junk out as I can. And then just whip it off. That's just like razor foam you're using? Yeah, it's just, just no, it's just the two millimeter stuff you get out of Michaels for a buck a sheet or whatever it is all I use, yeah. And then my measurement for the front is I just put my scissors against my against the hook point. Hook eye. Hook eye, and then I just cut it off. And it's it's almost kind of like a little diving lip on it. Yeah. You can make it longer and experiment with it. You know, it'll it kind of makes some makes some jig. Yeah, you know. But uh, well, that's a super simple fly. That's it. Cool. That's what you want. You want something. If you're going to lose them or whatever, you don't want to waste a lot of time and energy. So, George, not too.